We play and call it work. Mini Wargamer Dave here with Luca from MiniWarGaming.com. Welcome Wargamers to a demo playthrough of a pretty cool game that we received. This is a, it's a not, it's not going to be a how to play. No. That, that's already made. That'll be covered elsewhere. Yeah, that's already covered. In fact, link in the video description below to how to play this game, which is Storm Sunder Heirs of Ruin. That is the game that we're playing right now by Lazy Squire Games. We were sent a review copy and we wanted to get this out as fast as possible because the Kickstarter is literally today Tom and or onward. Right, yeah, yeah, for you it's today. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which is the 25th of February, so if you're watching this or a few days afterwards, uh, you can click on that link in the video description below to see the full game and everything that you get in it. We're not going to show the full game today because it's actually a pretty massive game. Oh, yo, this, is, this game huge. will take hours to fully complete. It's a it's campaign-based game, it's, right? It's campaign, right? So it's a, you can play one player, one to four players. Right. It's single or cooperative. Yep. And it's, a, it's an RPG. It's awesome combat. And the miniatures are really detailed and uh, amazing looking, really, and which, which is why it piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show it off just because it's relevant to the videos that we make. So if you guys like what you see, click on that link in the video description so that you can be brought to the Kickstarter so that you can see everything that this campaign or that this uh, game entails. Now for this video right now, we're gonna do a demo uh, of the playthrough. And uh, like we said before, not a how to play video. Right. So if you wanna know how to play, there's a good like good hour long video of how to play this game step by step, rule for rule. And that's another YouTuber that has done that. We've also included that link in the video description below. So without further ado, let's dive right into the demo. Enter Storm Sunder, choose your own adventure role-playing game. Dave and I will be controlling a team of four adventurers that are trying to combat a cataclysmic storm and we believe we found an artifact that will help in the vampiric city of Tarpit. We found a contact named Davor, but unfortunately we have no vampiric influence in the city. You can choose vampiric party members for your team, but we did not. So therefore, we go to his manor to try and get this artifact from him, though the guard stop us in place and in fact immediately attack us because we do not belong and that's where we're at. Now in this style of role playing game, every decision you make has great impact on the campaign. Now in this case, because we had no vampiric influence, we were stuck fighting the guard. Now the adventure is going to veer off into paths based on this encounter. The first player I will be controlling is Capic Roca. He is, um, if I had to say anything, a defender, a knight, a sentry. He can take hits. Uh, he will be the front line for this team. And again, we're playing a demo. So he, in this demo, he's already given certain amounts of equipment to start off with and to go deeper into the adventure with. Second character will be Winter. She is a roguelike pirate who is probably only interested in her own gains, but there is wealth to be had in this adventure. Dave will be controlling one Vanessa, a grizzled old hunter. Uh, she is not such a happy camper, and she's not too happy to be in this old city of vampires either. If I had to attribute her to anything, she would be a vampire hunter, very Van Helsing-esque character. Next would be Adina, which Dave and I have found to be kind of a main character so far in the campaign, at least for the roles that have come up. She is a priest. She is all, she's about all things holy. And again, also not too happy to be in this most unholy of cities. <laughs> and she does a lot of healing, we've yeah. found. Yeah, she's very powerful. She can punch through armor. And yeah, with, she's, she, she, she's proven to be good. Without her, I think the whole party would die. Right, everyone's got their one, but it's very important to have that healer role, right? So she does shine above all else. The first encounter we will be playing here is the entrance to the catacombs. We are dealing with Guard Captain Sever, Tar Pit Inquisitors, and Tar Pit Guardsmen, which are the vampiric guards and inquisitors of the city. So the initiative order is set for every encounter. As you can see here, the Guard Captain goes first, followed by Capac, sorry, Capac, and then we have Guardsmen. This is actually supposed to be flipped over. Another Guardsman. We have Vanessa, the grizzled veteran. We have the three inquisitors. And then we have Winter, the last two guardsmen, and uh, Adina? Yeah, Adina. Adina. We're gonna jump right in. Initiative starts with the guard captain. And just a reminder for full set of rules and an explanation of that, we've included a link in the video description to that tutorial. It's a good hour long video just describing anything. You will not get an in depth 
playthrough here. We're just doing the demo in this video. So guard Captain Sever, her adversary card, and her target is going to be the nearest enemy. She's going to heal herself for eight, though she's not wounded, so just going to target the nearest enemy. The guard captain here is going to do her spinning blades move. She's going to advance. This one wants to check to see if she can get in, engaged with multiple enemies. If so, she does this. So she's going to move there and then attack both uh, my Capic and Winter. And just a thing of note, our four characters have started on this side, this uh, zone, and these are all the enemies on this side of the board. Right, so we have, if anyone's curious, we have one, two, three, four. Those are all of the vampire guardsmen. The one, two, three, those are the inquisitors. They're ranged uh, vampire guardsmen, essentially. They have these crossbows. So, do the spinning blades first. Uh, it has a base damage of three, and she will attack each enemy she can. She throws four green dice at a range of one, and she's going to apply bleed as well. And then the best part she immediately returns to where she started after her attack. That's crazy. That's the that's the nuts part, yeah. She'll start this attack off by attacking Capic right there. So it's gonna be base damage three, plus the amount of swords I roll, which is awesome, because that's a nine. That's a total of six, plus three. So Capic's gonna take a hit of nine. But he does have three defense and three armor up right now. So he's gonna reduce that by six, but every time they do, you reduce your armor by one. Not your defense, just your armor. He's going to take three of his 27 health, and now he's bleeding! But we do have a hand of five ability cards. I'm going to use Rebuff 2, which is a cost of zero. You can use them whenever you want. And this hero is immune to two status effects from an incoming attack. You use that as a defensive ability while attacked. So no bleed for me. Blip. And again, because of spinning blades, she will attack any enemy she can in range. Which will be my lovely rogue, Winter. Who is not nearly as defensive? Okay, so that won't matter for her, but we are going to roll a total of three, which is six. Because we had the base three damage for the spinning blades. Now, she's only got one defense and one armor, so she's going to take four damage and lose her armor. But, because of her armor of the thief, she gets this lovely little stealth token, which means she can't be targeted until she then next attacks. So she's a little safe for now. Which is apply stealth to self as a defensive ability. And here's that four damage and a lovely bleed coming right up for her. <laughs> and if anyone's curious what bleed is, every, every time they activate, they take one damage. And it negates healing, too. And then, boop, she returns back to where she started at that start of that activation after her attack. So she runs forward, her five spaces, spins around, back, there she goes. Wow. Should also note what the objective of this scenario is. We're, we're trying to break our way in by killing everything in the way. So our goal is to kill everything. We obviously fail if we lose all of our players. Uh, another secondary option is to kill everything and leave guard Captain Sever alive uh, to escape and maybe come back later. Capic is up next. I get to draw an ability card. I get to draw up to three to bring my hand back up to five. So Capic here has five power, or ability points, uh, action points, sorry. We're going to use one of those on Resolute, a card in my hand. I'm just going to immediately gain two armor. Just going to get tanky. Got a whopping movement of three, so he's going to go one, two, three, and attack with three more uh, action points, leaving me with one left, but I got nothing to do with it. And we will be attacking with the Serpent's Tongue Flail, so it throws two red dice, which are quite good, and it'll be uh, base damage three. Because these are red dice, I'm going to make them magical attacks. That way it goes through their defense. And we have, well, we, get, we have one special and we got one extra. So we're gonna, we could do knockback one. But because he's up against the surface or an obstacle, it does an extra two damage. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that is going to be six damage on this guardsman. because he's, So he's got two defense against physical, but zero against magical attacks. Uh, moving along with the initiative order here, we got the first Tarpic Guardsman. This Tarpic Guardsman is going to get change of plans. Ooh. He's going to attack the highest health and then reshuffle the adversary deck, which is okay. It was just that and mend. Okay. All right. Number one being this Guardsman over here, he's going to attack the highest health, which is going to be Capic. He's going to go one, two, three. Now, we would normally try and flank, but to flank, we'd have to get here. Or there, but we only move three on these guys, so we're gonna go 
I guess we'll go here. We have pretty much total control over them. We have to try and play them like to the best of their advantage. This is just his initiative number, so we remember which one's which. So we'll keep following him. Elegant Strike. He is going to throw two green, two red, range one with one base damage. Now the linked adjacent fields part won't work because there's no linked enemies nearby. Base damage one plus two plus one. And then this is a critical hit, which is going to be three. So it counts as three swords. Yes. But I have the Solarettes of Unyielding. So as a defensive ability, I get to roll one red die for each crit rolled against me. If I roll a crit, I get to ignore one of the dice rolled by the attacker. So I'm pretty much looking for a skull to stop that. No. So I, unfortunately, I'm going to be taking... That's going to be five damage, because that's, yeah, three, four, five plus the base damage. But I got seven defense right now, in total. So I take zero damage, and I do lose an armor. Good thing you buffed yourself. Yes. And next in initiative order is the Tarpet Guardsman number two. And he's going to also mend, but Tarpet Guardsman number two has taken zero damage, so he's going to attack the nearest enemy, which will be, which will be Kavik. Yay. So he's going to go for elegant strikes, which means advancing. But if there's an enemy nearby, we have to try and flank. So we'll go one, two, and we will flank. And to flank, obviously, you have to be on the opposite end of an ally to attack an enemy. And flanking gives you a plus two to your base damage. So the same thing. So we have base, so, Ooh. oh, that's not good. But then you roll and you ignore I it. I can, so I need to roll skull to stop that. I oh. don't. If anyone's curious, there's a one in six chance. So this is really bad. That's three, plus three because of the base damage with flanking. Plus, plus three is three. nine. So that's nine damage coming my way. Sure is a good thing I got six armor up right now. So we're going to take three damage. We're going to lose an armor. So because we were at three, I'm going to put a five down and take away two, and I'll be at six. Next in initiative is Vanessa. First things first, I have a special ability called Marked for Death. I can discard one of my five cards here in order to mark an enemy, and I gain one power whenever I damage that marked enemy. Out of the five cards that I drew, I'll discard my dash card because I don't need to move any extra. And I'll mark this enemy right here because he eventually will be between two characters, and then we can get a bonus for surrounding them. And that's this guy right here, so we'll mark him. Now, Vanessa has a companion, a greater hawk, and it states that whenever there's a companion, I can attack with it first before I actually go with my character. Right, it's part of the activation, but they, they always go first. So my greater hawk is going to go there. And flank. And yes, indeed, we are now flanking that guardsman. And I'll roll for the greater hawk's attacks. It's three green dice and one red. Okay, so we got a crit there, which is pretty good. Oh, heck yeah, it is. So it's basically that. And my Greater Hawk doesn't have any base damage, so he only does four in total. This one here is ignored because it doesn't have anything on its card. And that applies to... Actually, you know what? We are flanking you. That's an additional two damage. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so he pretty much ignores his armor. For a total of four damage. Now for Vanessa, I'll spend two action points for Volley. What this does is it allows me to attack an area... Uh, a two by two area, so four squares in total. And anything that falls under that, ooh, will it? No, the bird's fine. The bird can't actually be hurt. That's right, because the bird cannot be targeted. Would you right. look at that? Okay, yep. so bird's safe. Gonna, it's going to attack those two guardsmen, so I'll do it right now. Using my Giant's Bane crossbow with a base damage of two and rolling four green dice. And let's see what I get. Okay. Nice, that's a good roll. Four plus the two, that's six. Six damage in total. Now, I'm not the one on this side flanking it, so I don't gain that bonus. Which brings this Tarpic Guardsman to eight damage taken. And because I damaged my marked target, I gain a power that I'm able to add to one of my abilities. Your, your signature skills there. And I have two signature skills. I'm thinking I'm going to do, let's just do improvised traps because I'm going to set some traps. You can use them a little bit earlier. So the, the idea of these signature skills is you kind of build up your ult. Well, for the, one's an ultimate, one's a utility, but you build up using them throughout the course of the game. You don't use them right away, you have to well, build it up. I'll keep saying build up. <laughs> yeah. Now rolling for the other Tarpet Guardsman. Volley! Oh, total bad. of four. So taking uh, two damage because there's two defense that it has, right? And since I rolled this, on the dice, on the attack dice, I apply blind. Blind targets cannot target enemies or allies and cannot become prepared, which means basically if they don't do anything on the turn, they can ready themselves to attack if 
I move within adjacent square of them, but they can't even do that now. It's essentially, they, they get to move, they technically have to move, but he can't attack next turn. Yeah, they can do nothing. And also it took the two damage. And to finish off Vanessa's turn, I'm just gonna use this premonition card. It costs zero action points, but I gain two power that I'm able to apply to one of my signature abilities. And my improvised traps can almost be used. Next in the initiative order is Tar Pit Inquisitor number one. Da 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 da! Oh! Ooh. So this means that no matter what it does, it's gonna target Vanessa. This will be Inquisitor number one. She has a range of four and moves up to five. They have a maneuver called Careful Advancing. They will move towards their target, but they're gonna stay at max ranged for firing purposes. So that's gonna take her one, two, three to there, and then that'll put Vanessa in range four. Her judgment attack is base damage three. It throws three green dice, and if I roll two special symbols here, it assigns damage, which means it ignores all defenses. And we get oh, just five damage. My defense here is three. I'll take away one of my armors. So I take two damage in total. If it bleeds, you can kill it. Next tar pit inquisitor. We go for change of plans again. All right, it's gonna target the highest health, which is gonna be Capic, and then we're gonna reshuffle the adversary deck again. So we are gonna go ahead and careful advance. Again, we wanna try and get max range. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, yeah. Technically over there, one, two, three, four. Capic is right there. Capic's right there. But we are gonna shoot through a piece of terrain. It's a low hanging piece of terrain, so we still have line of sight, but Capic will get plus one defense. Three green dice. They're really good at getting through my armor, but oh. they, not this time, only four. So I gain one defense, I ignore all the damage, but I do still lose an armor. And Tarpon Inquisitor number three. And it's Onslaught, oh. baby. So it's gonna target the lowest health enemy, and then one enemy, and the nearest soldier or creature will also then activate kind of out of order, kind of uh, chaos on the battlefield. Awesome, I love it. So there's no creatures. So but basically one enemy, which is one of us. Right, and a soldier. Which is one of them. So lowest health is going to be the target for the Inquisitor number three. Now that's technically Winter here, my rogue, but she's stealth right now and she can't be targeted. So the next lowest health is Adina in the back. So Tarpit Inquisitor number three will move one, two, three, just to get Adina in range four. And same thing, base three. Oh, that's a bad roll. There's like, how many are those? There's one of those, everyone. There is one of those symbols. Just roll three ones. <laughs> Adina's defense is only one, so she still takes two damage here. Now, it specifies not the nearest enemy. It just says an enemy gets to activate, and it says enemy first, so that'll be technically one of our things. So there's your... Tar pit right there, Inquisitor, and then we're gonna use Adina. Yeah, we're gonna activate Adina so she can go twice this round. First things first, under activation, I'm gonna cash in this card, my Holy Arrows, because I don't have any raised enemies on the board. So I'll gain two power for that. And with those two power, I'll put on, I might as well put on the chain healing because I'm gonna be healing some stuff. I'm gonna move on this square and flank this guardsman. Actually, reverse time there. That's Adina, so I'll do that. The reason why I want to flank that guardsman is because I get a free attack if I spend two action points for punch. Punch! Afterwards. Second thought, I'm going to go one, two, three, because I want to flank this guy right there. He's a bit already been wounded a lot, so the chances of me killing him are greater. And then I can still attack this guy afterwards with my punch. Fist of the Heavens! I get three blue dice, which is great because it... It ignores their armor, doesn't it? Right, they don't have any magical defense. This is a magic, blue dice for magical attacks. So four plus two is six. Plus I rolled that, which means I heal for two, and I only had two, so those are now healed. Nice. Straight six damage on this Tarpid Guardsman. All right, he's only got four health left. And then I'll spend my last two action points on punch. Punch. Attacking that Tarpid Guardsman right beside him because he's adjacent. Aha! Do oh, it. nice. Actually, after looking at the card a little longer, I realized that even if I got two damage, which is the max there. He's too armored. Too armored, so I wouldn't even do anything. So instead of doing that, I'm going to burn that for a couple more power. power points. And I'll add them to my chain healing. Now, you might be wondering, 
why are we on the companion? We, you're allowed to stand on top of and move through medium companions. They don't actually take up any spaces, but you're not normally allowed to move through any other models. Now that's still continuing off the onslaught. Now the nearest soldier gets to activate. So that means the nearest, that's zones. So we have the yellow lines and the lines on the tiles that divide the zones. The nearest soldier will be this tar pit inquisitor here who will activate. Onslaught is a little wild. Uh, we are gonna get Capic Roca, which cool. is the, her last target. Doesn't need to move at all, she's already at max range, so she's gonna stand still and throw a total of four damage at Capic Roca. Uh, again, his defense will increase by one because of the intervening terrain, but we're burning through that armor. Now the onslaught is finally resolved, we can move on to next in initiative order, which is Winter. Now, unfortunately for Winter, with bleed at the start of your activation, you take a damage. But for Winter, uh, she has a shiny ability. I always gain one power at the beginning of each activation. Nice. And whenever the party gains gold, I can discard one to gain three power. So she really amps up her power quick. I'm going to go with Backstab, because that could be cool. So we are going to start off with the Demonic Blade. She pulls this out. It's a cool melee attack. It only uses green dice, so it's physical. But it assigns damage. Uh, never mind, forgot that these tar pit guardsmen are too armored. They cannot have damage assigned to them. You always have to go through their armor. So, instead of doing that, we are instead going to just ambush. Boop. I will have to move first. So we're going to move there so that we're flanking this guardsman with Capic here. And by flanking, you get plus two. Uh, BD. So I pretty much get plus four. Nice. And I'm going to use my pistol, the black flag. Oh, only because it's red dice, so it's impact. The impact, I can make this magical, like a magical uh, bullet, essentially. Huh. Good enough. So I have a total of five damage against that one guardsman. That would be five more damage on him, putting him at eight. Seven. Math. Seven, seven, seven. So I also have Gloves of the Thief. They give me literally no defense and no armor, but I get to roll 2d6 when attacking an adjacent enemy. And every time I roll a six, I gain a gold. That's it. You gain gold. You I do. gain a gold! Which you can use for a three uh, action. I can do stuff with gold? So use my shiny ability. Because we're not doing a long, drawn out campaign, gold's not as important. But I can discard one gold to gain three power. And you'll put your power back on your backstab here? Yeah, I'm going to do it on the big old backstab. Nice. Four power on backstab. I have one action point left. I'm going to burn my demonic blade because it's not going to be... Ah, uh, it could be pretty useful. Ah... Uh... Uh, against Inquisitors? Against the Inquisitors specific. No, I'm going to burn the Demonic Blade to get another attack. Or to get two more action points to attack with my sword. So it's going to be three green dice. Ah! Uh, Very good. It's going to be an extra three. So that's going to be another four damage. He's ignoring three because they have an ability called uh, Bulwark, Bulwark of... So, I was a little incorrect with the Bulwark of Tar Pit. They can be assigned damage as long as you're flanking them. I kind of forgotten that. That's okay, I still did a good amount of damage. I'm not too concerned about that. But what I was talking about was their defensive formations. If they are adjacent with another Guardsman, they get plus one defense, or physical defense, up to three. I'm going to burn Dirty Fighting for two more action points, and I'm going to use that on first aid to get rid of the bleeding. So, if you ever, if you ever heal with bleeding, you don't get any of the heal, but you also get rid of the, the bleed status effect. Initiative goes to Tarpic Guardsman number three. All right, Mr. Guardsman, you're attacking Winter. Oh, boy. Oh, well, you just took the bleed off, too, didn't you? Yeah, it's true. Guardsman number three is right here, so we can definitely make it to Winter and just give a stab. Yeah, just for fun, I'm going to zoom into the models here. Because they're so cool looking. Unfortunately, he throws, you know, two green, two red. Uh, okay, so he's only got base damage one, so that's going to be four, five damage coming at Winter. She's going to negate one of that with her defense, and then she's going to become stealth again. Ha <laughs> ha! Any bleed? No. That's only from the real nasty captain. Oh yeah, the captain sever. Initiative goes to tar pit guardsman number four. And he's going to go ahead and overwhelm! He's going to target the lowest, and he's going to get three extra base damage. Oh man. Okay, we got lucky there, because, well, it's, it's, it, it's me with the lowest health. With Winter. But I'm not targetable, so the next lowest is Adina, who's not in range to attack. So he's going to move. Oh, never mind, she has one, <laughs> two, three. She's going to get a stab. Oh, man. So it's base damage four, uh, plus three. So seven damage at Adina. 
One defense here, I take off one, so I take six damage, bring me down to nine health. Yeah, it's not the best. Yeah, good thing I go next. She's next though, yeah. And last in initiative is Adina herself. She finally gets to go. Well, she did already go once, but this is her actual turn. Onslaught! Drawing cards up to five. Let's see what we get here. First things first, self-preservation. Zero action points for that, but I gain two action points by doing it. So I'm a total of seven action points right now. With her Fist of the Heavens attack, I'll target the guard, uh, guardsman, the target the guardsman number two, because he's almost dead. Right, you've got four health left. So four damage, going through the armor. He's pretty much automatically dead. Okay. And you get to heal. And I heal because I rolled at least one of those. I think it heals per roll. So I think you heal Each four. that is healing for two. Oh, look yeah. at that. You know what? Okay, so I'm going to go back up to uh, two. You're right, it is per these. As for my uh, Robe of the Phoenix, that's awesome. So I'm back up to two damage. I killed the guard, uh, the Tartic Guardsman. It was number two. Yeah, he's real messed up. He's super dead. And loot. And loot. And this is the loot deck right here. I get an Amethyst, which is good for me. A campaign. Well, when anyone in the party gains gold, I gain power. Well, are you okay to give up one of that gold so yes. I can gain three power? Yes, Let's awesome. I get, I get power. I'll spend two action points to throw a rock, and I'll apply stun to a soldier within three inches. Throw a rock. Throwing a rock at this Inquisitor, so basically when they're stunned, they lose a turn. And with my last two action points, I'll spend it on Yedra's Light, and I'm able to stun another vampire. Which I'll apply to Tar Pit Inquisitor number three. The power of Adina. Yeah, she's pretty powerful. That's the end of Adina's turn, which ends that first round. Yes. So that was actually a really, really eventful round. A lot of things got damaged. Uh, I didn't really heal you or the party too much. Healed herself just from happenstance, from rolling yeah. things. Uh, a lot of damage inflicted by Sever, uh, the captain back there. And who's going to come up again? She always goes first, which is the issue. Yeah. Uh, and But the good thing is that we've killed yeah. a lot, and we've stunned a few, and we know that next in the initiative order, stuff is pretty weak, so we can gang up on it and kill it. Right, to really limit what they can do. Now, right. as we go into round two of eight, uh, we get to rearrange our order on our characters if we want to, but the enemies stay the same. Yep. Starting off round two is Guard Captain Sever. Welcome back. Boom. Just to show off the order of initiative here. We got Capic going first and then after the enemies, because we're going to most likely kill that one, uh, we have Vanessa next and then Adina and then lastly Winter. Alright, Guard Captain Sever, please don't draw something scary. Uh, okay, good, because she's not hurt, so she doesn't really matter if she heals herself, but she's going to try to attack the nearest enemy, which is Capic, Capic Roca. So she's now going to double slash because she can't get uh, in combat with multiple enemies. So she's going to advance towards Capic Roca. And oh, she's going to flank him, of course, because that makes most sense. And uh, attack him. La, 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 la. So this is base damage three. Okay, nice. So we have a severe wound right away. Uh, that lowers my permanent health by five. Ugh. So this is base damage three plus one for four. That's not so bad. Plus the... Uh, uh, I'll flank that right six. I'm going to reduce three of that and take three more damage. And I'm just going to go ahead and chalk up a severe wound on him. Severe wounds! I guess I'll put it down here. Yeah. So his health is minus five, but because of his abilities, he's at 30 health. Or sorry, it's his armor that gives him 30 health. So he's at 25 max health now. And she attacks again with double slash. Okay, not giving me another severe wound, but with base damage <laughs> five, that's nine in total. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take six, putting me at 15 damage taken. I only have 10 health left. Oh boy. Catholic Roke is up next. Revenge! So I drew punch. I'm, it's not great in this situation. I'm going to sell it for two power. Yep. And we're going to put that on Shield Bash. He's going to attack with his flail. He's going to attack Guardsman number one in an attempt to take him out. So we're going to use this attack as a magical attack. It's base damage five right now because I'm flanking. So I need to do seven damage. I do six damage. <laughs> Oh, uh, knock back one. But I do get knocked back one. And if you can't get knocked back directly backwards, it's an extra two damage, I'm almost certain. So I think I do kill him, actually. Wow. Yeah, because uh, he was in the way there. Uh, I'm in the way. No, you're in the way. Winter's in the way. Awesome. So yeah, you knock back one tile away. 
exactly in the opposite direction. And if you can't get pushed because of a piece of terrain or another model in the way, you are assigned to more damage. They are immune to assigned damage unless they're flanked. In this case, he is flanked and dead. Nice. Loot! Loot! See what you get. Greater power. May the floating purple swirly potion serve you well. <laughs> Gain three power! Nice! Hey, there we go. We got shield bash fully fueled. So if he's attacked, I can assign five damage to an adjacent attacker. Then Capic Roca will move here just in case he decides to attack the nearest. I can shield bash him. So because you killed that one and that one is also dead, next up is Vanessa. Boom. Vanessa's going to send the Greater Hawk out first in behind this Guardsman, which is being flanked now by Winter and the Greater Hawk. Rolling dice for attacks here. Okay, not bad. Five damage in total because of defense minus two to that, so three damage in total. Nine Very nice. Two. Nine wounds left, yeah? Yeah. Now with Vanessa's Giant Bane crossbow, I'm gonna target that same guardsman because it's already wounded. Got four dice here with base two attacks. Ooh, very oh, very nice. Oh, wow. So we got, ooh. Seven? Yep. Oh, we've got this under control. That's another five damage. You got four health remaining. I'll spend the last two action points on Throw Rock, which I'm able to stun a soldier within three. It's my favorite card. It is pretty sweet, eh? So right there, throwing the rock, it's gonna stun him. We've got this under control. Stronger together, zero action points. I'll gain two action points that I can give to an ally, which I will. Power. Or power, rather, uh, to chain healing for Adina, because she needs to heal some allies. And then premeditation, premeditation. Premeditation. Premeditation, there you go. <laughs> uh, gaining two power for myself. Into traps. Into traps. So I've expended my power there to use my improvised traps. Now it only costs three because Adina has a special ability for Overseer's Collar. So my signature skill costs one less. Yeah, so it's an aura ability. Uh, that has a certain range, but she has a special ability that makes all her auras hit the entire battlefield. Because she's awesome. Because she's cool. Main character. <laughs> Placing the improvised trap right here in front of Adina, because it's in the same zone. Yeah, and the improvised trap, it assigns six damage and stops moving immediately. That's pretty good. Not bad at all. And I'll just note here that the powers that I put on uh, traps, I'm going to put on last stand, because I, didn't, I only needed three for improvised traps. And then I'll cash and punch for two more power, which I'll put on last stand. The initiative track, stunned, misses its turn. And then, boop. Tarpon Inquisitor, number two. Number two? It's gonna attack Vanessa. Ooh. That's Tarpon Inquisitor way over here. The issue is trying to get in range of Vanessa and line of sight, because you gotta remember, you can't uh, see through other models. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're taking down Vanessa. But that puts her in a rough spot. Ah, I should have put the traps there. Well, you couldn't because you can only put it in your own zone, right? Uh, true. We wanted to, but... That's true. Well, I could have moved her there first. That's true. Yeah. That always works. But if you moved her there, then I would have just shot from over here because she would have had the direct line of sight and not have to go deeper oh, to get through all the models. True. Yeah. That's true. A lot, lot of things, a lot of things. But, you know, no bonuses. Uh, base damage three, you know, plus five. So just eight, wow. eight damage against Vanessa. Two defense. So I take away two, so I take six. Oh my goodness. And I now have 12 health remaining. And I lose this armor, wow. The next Tarpon Inquisitor is stunned, so we don't have to worry about that. And then Adina. These are the cards that I drew. First things first, for zero action points, I'll heal an ally for four. That will be Vanessa. So I'll take that away, put that, she's down to four. Makes me feel a little better. I'll spend three action points for balance. I heal a nearby target uh, by my current health, which is 13 in this case. So that will be Capic. Again, nearby is anything in the same zone as you. So Capic's gonna heal 13. He's only gonna be missing two health. It's a huge heal. I'm gonna cash this in for extra action points because uh, I'm only down to two right now and I don't have enough to do Fist of the Heavens yet. And you'd like to attack. Yeah, I would love to attack. So yeah, I'll do that. 
Fist of the Heavens is range two, so I'll attack that guardsman there because almost dead, right? Uh, he's got four health left, so this is pretty much a guaranteed kill. So I it is guaranteed because it's four, and there's no armor on you. Uh, yeah, you just, you're, you're only rolling because you might be able to heal with your armor. You're correct, because if I roll uh, the, these... That symbol there, you heal. And you... Oh, I don't. You don't, but you overkill. I do. He burns up in the holy fire! <laughs> and a loot, which is jade... Can also be used to craft an accurate scope. Gain five gold. I'll give one of those to you. Yay, gold! More power. more power. Three more power for the backstab. Bam, that puts us at seven to ten for our backstab. Nice. Which is, we only need nine. That's going to bring us over to this guardsman who is stunned and to winter. I am going to go ahead, uh, because of shiny, I get one power at the start of my turn. And when you do use a signature ability, you don't use all the power. You get to store whatever was remaining on it. So we have a lot on backstab right now. We have 11, and it only costs 9 to use. Uh, we're going to do a big attack. Nice. So we are going to use 9 of our power. Again, it's only 9 because we have Adina's uh, little necklace on that reduces his cost by 1. And backstab, it gives us, uh, it augments a melee attack. So I'm going to augment the scimitar of the thief. You can only ever augment one attack. I can't do multiple augments on one attack unless... Yes. Card says otherwise. Scimitar of Thieves is pretty good with three. It's not so bad, yeah. If I kill something, I gain two gold, which means I gain more power. <laughs> uh, if a target is flanked, I get plus eight bonus damage uh, to this wow. attack. And if I slay, I get loot. So it's going to be plus ten bonus damage with three dice. And of course, Winter is just going to stand still and uh, come out of stealth. This Inquisitor was not the wiser. Turns around and says, oh no. Well, I guess a backstab would mean she wouldn't see it coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, getting some big numbers. Uh, I don't think the star matters for me, but I do maybe steal some gold off this vampire in a moment. So, it's a total of base damage 10 because of flanking in the card, plus 2 damage on the scimitar, so it's 12, plus 3 for 15. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, the most unfortunate thing is that they have one physical defense and 15 health, so it's got one health left. Oh, no! But, but, I, I do have an offhand weapon. Yes. I'm able to attack with that. I just have to use a card to give me more ability or action points. So I'm going to go with the code, which is gain two AP and move two fields. I'm not going to bother moving two fields. I like where I am. I got four AP left. I'll use the pistol, the black flag, because it's um, a secondary weapon. So I'll fire with that. I'm allowed to have two weapons. And I am, of course, it's a red die. And I'm flanking, so my base damage goes up to three, because that's one. And I'm going to use this as a physical attack, not a magic one. They have better magical defense. So I kill it. I, I automatically killed her pretty much anyways, but it's kind of cool to you know, imagine the pistol in the back of the head. Stab and then pistol for the execution. <laughs> Sweet. But we do take out an Inquisitor. And the Inquisitor is kind enough to bequeath us with loot! A power! I gained two more power. Just what the doctor ordered at a hospital that's totally going to get shut down. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to go fuel more of that backstab with that power. Fantastic. Now I gotta roll for the Gloves of the Thief. I technically attacked an adjacent enemy twice, so I'm gonna roll this twice. For every six, I get gold. If I get sixes. Nope, no sixes. Now she's done all she needs to do here, so she's gonna move up to six. Three, four, five, six. Happy back there. Behind Vanessa. And she's not stealth anymore, so that's why. She's also like super critically hurt. She's got a whopping nine health left. But she's got a dodge card up, so I get to ignore one attack that does target her. Right there, yeah. That's a big deal. And that will bring us to round three, where we're probably going to reorganize where our characters are, I Re think. Reset the initiative. Yeah. Guard Captain Sever's going first, but just, just so uh, our players, our characters, Capic's going to go first, followed up by Adina, and then Tarpit Inquisitors will also go. They're both still alive at full health. Vanessa next, one last Guardsman, and then Winter. All right, Sever. Chances are we have this set up nicely, so Nearest assault three. Enemy. Perfect. Okay, well, that's still kind of scary. Uh, nearest enemy, but also ignoring three of my defense on Capic. But yeah. it, it, it is what it is. And that's exactly what you have, three defense. That's, yeah, I got nothing else fast. Oh, straight damage on <laughs> you. Straight damage. Though she has the capability of attacking multiple enemies, so she does go with spinning blades first. And, you know, traps aren't always seen, so she's going to go to there. Because she wants to try and do the first one and attack multiple enemies, but in doing so, she goes on the trap. Six damage. Which ends her movement, which is fine. She's going to do that anyways. But she does take six damage assigned. No defense. She awesome. got Only has 20, so she got 14 health left. Sweet. Take that, Sever. And base damage three plus this against Kapik. Uh seven. Boy, that's not great. Yep, that's seven damage. It goes right through. 
we take the seven, and now we're bleeding again. That's, the, that's great stuff, folks. But we're gonna shield bash her now. Uh, in response to her attacking me, I'll spend four, three of the four power, three. actually, and then she will have five damage assigned to her. Oh, so sweet. She, she just took 11 damage by doing that. <laughs> Bringing her down to nine wounds remaining. It's like she doesn't know what she's doing. And now for unfortunate Adina. We have base damage three, six, seven as well. Oh. And ignoring her defense. This captain's brutal. Oh yeah. So I'm bleeding now with Adina. Next up we got Capic. We're gonna go ahead and draw. Warp battle cry. Remove all negative effects from allies within. Yo! That's so good! Nice. Woo! Well, that's two of my, I'm still gonna do it. So within one zone, in this specific case, hits the entire board. Yeah, it's all of us. Yeah. <sighs> Ally, so it doesn't get rid of mine. So is this worth doing? Because so it gets rid of your bleed. Bleed for me. Yep. Do my little fancy cards later. Capic Roca is going to move here, flank the captain, and give her a crack in the back of the head with the flail. <laughs> we're flanking, so we're at base damage five. Uh, it doesn't really matter if we use physical or magical. She's got the same defense in both, which is one. So we are going to do seven damage. Uh, so she reduces it down to six. She is down to three wounds. With my remaining two action points, I will battle cry. Remove all negative effects from allies within one zone, and you yourself count as an ally. We just had to double check that. So that's gonna clear up bleed and severe wounds, putting his health back up to a total of 30. It will take away Adina's bleed as well. And that's doubly good, so now Adina's free to heal without worrying about bleed getting in the way. Done with Capic, now moving right to Adina. At Dina, first things first, we'll Fist of the Heavens and attack Captain Sever. That's three dice here. Plus six base damage because of the flank, so that's seven. So I actually heal four because of these. That's and true, every yeah. Every one I heal. Because of the armor. Good thing you uh, spent your, uh, what was it? Your... The war cry? The war cry. Or the battle cry? Yeah, battle cry. Because I actually heal for it because I'm not bleeding anymore. Exactly. So that would, uh, you know what, it's not as bad because the first one would have negated the healing, then you would have healed two, but it's better to heal four. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, not bad. That's pretty good. And then obviously, Guard Captain Sever is dead. She only had like three health left. <laughs> then I'll use two action points with Holy Blast, and I may attack an additional target using two of my magic dice, but I gotta discard two in order to use it, so I'll just discard those two. Worthless cards, yeah. And we're Holy Blast, we're pretty much gonna attack this tar pit guardsman right there. And you know, these are magic damage that goes right through his armor. So the first one, it's gonna be two damage, and just reroll it. And for the second attack, we get one. Level one. So that's three. And I heal myself again. Oh, that's maybe true, actually. Yeah. It's very true. The armor works for all attacks, and this is an attack, so. Awesome. Wow, she's just pumping out the heals on herself. And because we killed the guard captain, almost forgot to draw three loot cards. We got ruby, power, and consumables. We got to draw, we get to draw a consumable. Well, who killed them? Adina? Yeah. Adina gets two power, and Adina gets six gold. But can I have one of those gold? Yep. Nice. <laughs> I'll put those two power on chain healing again. And I'll go up to seven power on backstab because of uh, shiny. And then I'll use five power on chain heal because of my ability. It's one less, and I get to target all linked allies and heal them five. And there's two linked allies. One is Vanessa, and the other is Winter. Yeah, so the way linked stuff works, this is the first time it comes up. You target something, and then pretty much in a straight line from them, not a straight line, but in a, in a potential line, an adjacent Ally is targeted, they're healed, and they can keep chaining from there, but we only have a chain of two here. So they both heal for five, you said? Yep. So Vanessa's back to full. Yes. And Winter is down to four. Not a bad heal at all. And I haven't actually moved yet with Adina, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm now adjacent to that enemy. Yeah. I'm moving one, two, and three. Stop. And second thought, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll land here and the reason why is because I want to actually exhaust my Fists of the Heavens. This is last use, folks. It's a good item. So what this does right here is I can discard two, which will be these right here. And by doing that, I can exhaust this weapon and I slay one adjacent vampire. And I'm just going to choose this vampire right here and automatically slay him. Now, I do sacrifice the weapon. I'm not able to use it anymore, but we're pretty close to the end. So boom, he is now dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's... It felt like a little bit of a waste because we did Holy Power twice. We were hoping to do more damage with the Holy Power and then realizing, oh wait, he's got defense too. A little bit more durable for those guys over there. 
So we'll pretend like we didn't move with, with Adina at all. She turns around, burns that vampire to a crisp, exhausting the fist of the heavens, and then she'll move one, two, three to get behind this Inquisitor. That sounds good. Next in line, the Inquisitors finally get to play the game. <laughs> the Inquisitors got a change of plan. Attack the highest health, and we're going to head and reshuffle that adversary deck. Kathic will be the highest health. She's cautionary, though, so she's going to go move over there just to get max range away from him. In fact, I guess it would make more sense if she went... No, that's going to block line of sight, so we'll go there. And throw three dice with base damage three, so a total of five. But I have defense three, so I only take uh, two. And then Tarpin Inquisitor number two, or three goes. This last Inquisitor is going to mend. Uh, going to attack the nearest enemy and heal herself for three, but she's at full health. The nearest enemy, ignoring the bird, will be Capic, so she's going to move back, be a little cautious, and shoot at him. He's just a big old tank. Uh, we are going to go ahead and roll a total of six, though, and take three because of our defense three. Eh, putting us the three down here. He's getting bloody again. Yeah, he's getting pretty hurt. <laughs> But now Vanessa is up. Oh yeah. Out of the five new cards I drew for Vanessa, I'm gonna spend two action points on clone. What that allows me to do is use my greater hawk twice. Essentially, yeah. We have to discard one card to do it, but that is super worth. And I'll discard my survivor's guilt because I'm not guilty for cloning. <laughs> so if anyone's curious what those useless cards are, they're meant for the campaign. They're a hindrance in your deck right away, uh, but you upgrade them throughout the course of the campaign and you kind of overcome your Frailty exactly, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like the self-doubt on Adina, the survivor's guilt on Vanessa. Every character has one. Bird. Oop. One, two, three, four, five. And then gets to attack, and then attack again because of clone. Three and one. Okay. That's four damage so far. And then might as well attack again. Ooh! Oh, a crit. critical! Crit. Ooh! What's this bird doing? So that's three, Pecking five, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage. Uh, minus two, because minus one from each one. Right. So it's a total of ten damage. She's only got five health left. Wow. Jeez, bird. <laughs> and Vanessa will use her giant Bane crossbow. <laughs> I got to move, I think. No, you got good line of sight. Oh, actually, yeah, look at that. Uh, stay where I am and shoot. So that's four attack dice, green dice. Let's see what I get. With a base damage of two. Uh, not bad. Uh, she's blinded because yeah. of the special trigger. That's right. So that's five minus one for a total of four. She's got one health left. Oh. One remaining wound. And that will end Vanessa. And all we have left is Winter. One power because of Shiny, putting us at eight. So we need one more for backstab. Winter moves six. One, two, th wait, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll, we'll stand on the bird as well. <laughs> because I, I kind of like that spot. We're going to attack this Inquisitor. We're going to do it. Oh, I guess we should do Scimitar of the Thief because it actually makes more sense. We get two gold when we slay an enemy. But it would have been so much cooler to just kind of walk up and hit her in the head with the pistol. <laughs> so I guess we'll just run past her and cut her head off. Bam! Oh, no! Uh, it's base damage, too. We still kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Figure she's only got one defense. Nice! Oh, it's also three dice. Nice. Nice. Bam. Another vampire going back to its forever home. We'll go ahead and loot one. Power! Hey, look at that! Which will be more than enough now for backstab. And I also get two gold for attacking, so I'll get three more power, I guess, technically. Wow. Now, this might be overkill, but I did attack an enemy with an adj adjacent enemy, so I might get more gold. I don't. That's with my thief gloves. <laughs> so the track is going to go up to turn four, and I think this is where we finish her off. We already have a plan. So the new order is going to be Cap, Cap Groca, Winter, and then Vanessa and Adina if we need them. I think we're only going to need these two, though. Start of Cap Groca's activation. We're going to go ahead and use Dash, finally. This is actually going to be very useful here to gain two speed, bringing his speed up to five. And with that, we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then behind. And then we're going to swing with the hammer, or flail, I guess. Base damage three will make this a physical attack. So it's going to be four damage and a knockback. I'm going to see if that's optional because I don't want a knockback in this case. Pretty sure the knockback has to happen. If not, it's not that big of a deal because we can fix this. We wanted a flank for winter coming up next. Uh, that costs us three of our five action points. That'll still be three damage on this Inquisitor. She will have 12 remaining health. And then we're going to use self-preservation to gain two action points, putting us to four. 
And then we're going to use charge for three to fix uh, the knockback mistake. <laughs> so charge lets us move two to four fields in a straight line and apply stun to an adjacent target. Oh, actually, that also will work because I have to move at least two to four fields. So if I go one, that's not good enough. No matter what, no matter where I go, he's not going to get the flank. I need flank for the backstab. Roka, you had one job, man. <laughs> like, come on. So oh. he's going to... I don't know, he's gonna go in a straight line if that if you wanna call that a straight line. He'll go there. Oh charge! Nothing to apply a stun to because well he messed up. <laughs> well the whole plan was for Winter to go in and backstab and take it out, but we'll see how much damage she can do on her own, I guess. Well Winter, here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aha! We have five power right now. So not power, action points. I'll burn the hit and run for an action point, so I'll have six, so I get to attack with both my weapons. We'll do the pistol, the black flag first as a physical attack. Come on, crit! Now, base damage one plus that, so uh, whopping two. two. Uh, so it takes one damage because you got defense one. Taking four health. And then sword attack. Scimitar of the thief, base damage two. Nice! Ooh, nice. Plus four, so that's six. Five damage in total. Should be another five. Gonna have six health left? Yes. That's all I can really do though. So again, hopefully that backstab. Initiative will go to the Inquisitor and see what it can do before it gets taken out by probably one of these two. The Inquisitor will harass two, targeting the nearest enemy, and then all nearby enemies are assigned three damage. This is a really powerful one. I'm, we're actually lucky this didn't come up earlier for us. Yeah, true. So we're going to attack Winter, but we have to move away from Winter because we want to be cautious. But we also don't want to move around anyone. And if we move in this direction, then we're not going to do damage to nearby enemies. So we're going to go... Bam, to there. We're going to attack Winter, and then we're going to harass him, and he'll take three damage, because he's nearby, which is meaning this zone. So it's a sign three. So he's going to take his three, so he'll be at 17 health taken. Damage taken. He'll have, he'll have a whopping 13 left. And then the shots into Winter. Uh, three, four. Winter has defense one, so she'll take three. Taken seven, and then she vanishes. Poof. And then can Vanessa take out this final Inquisitor with six health left? Vanessa will go. My greater bird, my greater hawk will go there. That's as far as he can go. He can't attack the Inquisitor, unfortunately, but Vanessa's going to go. One, two, three, four. You know, I'm just going to move there just in case there's like a, a nearby zone thing that might happen. Right, just a nearby. Gotcha, gotcha. And then crossbow bolt to the face. Oh, yeah. Base two damage plus four. four. Six in total. Minus one, five. That's a dead, that's a dead Inquisitor. Oh, one nice. solid bolt, pins her up against the wall, and she goes to her forever home. Loot for Vanessa. Da, 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 da. Oh. Uh, another consumable. There's separate decks. If you, you can draw weapons or consumables, stuff like that, you draw from that deck. And the same thing if you search uh, the, the armor rack and the weapon racks are like a little too far in. We were preoccupied with our like one basic objective, which is to kill all enemies. Oh, yes. Which we succeeded. Because Korn wanted it. That's what we did. <laughs> Good job, team. Yeah. Well, that will conclude that mission. So, overwhelming victory for us. Now, Capic here, he freaks out. He grabs the bodies. He goes to drag them away and hide them. And we get a bunch of loot and experience and all that good stuff to level our characters up. Also, there's a cool mechanic that counts the defense of the city. Uh, we've technically lowered it because we killed a good amount of the guard. Now, next, that was the catacomb entrance. We actually go into the catacombs now. And we come across peril, as to be expected. The catacombs are old and ancient and uh, in disrepair. So we're, we're given two options. We're either going to be buried alive in a, in a tunnel where we can try and do a strength check to kind of like unbury ourselves, get, dig ourselves out, <laughs> or go deeper into an antechamber and figure out what happens there. And that's where the narrative ends. I think that's a better option. I like option number two. You, like, you, like, you don't like the, the, the digging out. Well, we got Capic Roca. He's a strong guy. But, I mean, the antechamber... Seems like the safe option, but you know what happens when there seems to be a safer option. Deeper in the catacombs. <laughs> That's exactly right. So uh, thanks again uh, to Lazy Squire Games for uh, sending us this prototype. It's an awesome game. I love these kind of games. Yeah, they're so immersive. Right. Uh, and the campaign system is great. And uh, I actually want to play more right now so that we can continue it. Right, to see, cool. like, you, I, I love the character progression, the items they get, and it's very uh, quick to pick up game too, especially if you're focusing on one character. Yeah. Like if you're new to this kind of game, you sit down with an experienced table, you'll, you'll pick it up, no problem. So click on the link in the video description below to bring you to the Kickstarter. It's uh, currently live right now. It starts February 25th, which right. is 
uh, today, so if you're watching this afterwards, that's when it started, and it only goes for either two weeks or three weeks. It's one or the other, so it's not a very long Kickstarter. Uh, so uh, check it out, and uh, thanks again for watching. Happy working. <laughs>